So I'm going to say that my 15 minutes hasn't started yet. Um, well, I, I, thanks, everybody, for coming. I mean, this has been great. I, I've, this has just actually been really phenomenal to see how other people are using Bro. It's, it's fun to sit around and think about how I use it and how I could use it and stuff. But it's, it's even better to see how other people are using it and what they're doing. Well, and, and even more than that, to, to see the connections being made between people and, and uh, people getting excited about stuff other people are doing, like the SSH stuff that Scott presented yesterday. I heard quite a bit of interest in that. I don't even see Scott. Hmm. OK. All right. Um, so sorry, Keith. I'm cutting into your time. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start now, I guess. So 9.04. All right. There we go. So this is my 15-minute bro talk. I, I've talked to a number of people already. That I, I limited myself deliberately to an extremely ridiculously small amount of time because what's easy for me is to go for six hours. What's hard for me is to go for 15 minutes. And if something, you know, it's almost like if something's not hard, why do it, right? <laughs> because then we would all just be sitting at home watching TV, because that's nice and easy. So I have this kind of uh, big picture, big picture of bro that, that I've been sort of laying on people for a while and trying to say, am I going too far with this? And feel free to come up to me later and let me know if I am. You know, uh, in, my, in my view, look at what things were like 10 years ago, and look at what they're like now. How many more IP devices do you have at home now that are running IP, or that are, that are network connected, or that can talk to other electronic devices? If it's like that at your house, and Derek talked about this yesterday, what's it like everywhere else? So the world's got you know, probably more computers talking to each other than people at this point. Well, you can hear the people talking. You know what they're saying is great. You, know, you can figure out, you, know, you can kind of tell if they're lying maybe by like what they sound like or something or, or words they're choosing. But there aren't any tools really. And bro's not even there yet, in my opinion. We're getting there. But there aren't even tools for saying, now I, I, I realize that these computers are talking, and there's this big network, and everything can talk to everything. And IPv6 is going to really even push that to the extreme. These, these tools, it's like almost a, um, a necessary thing from a larger perspective, where 100 years from now, I hope people can look back and say, well, it's good that there were people working on Bro and people working on these other tools to understand what these things were saying to each other. Because it turns out, if we don't know what they're saying on a large scale, great, we can monitor one at a time. But if we don't know what they're saying to each other at a large scale, that's a bad situation to be in. Because suddenly, you don't know how it's working. And people can take advantage of that by looking at the individual point things where I broke into this system. This person has. 10,000 systems, though, and I know that they, they don't know what any of them are saying to each other. And they have no way of looking at what they're saying to each other, which made it very, very easy for me to come in and look at that one system and break into it and know that I, I was never going to get caught. So I, I hope that we're sort of stepping that direction and adding the sort of stuff where people can actually, for themselves, in a way that makes sense to themselves, <laughs> start looking at what the computers are saying to each other and what the IP-connected devices are saying to each other. Um, so it's just this idea that networks are everywhere. And you know we're not building a security tool. What we are building, I, mean, I know that most of the people in this room work in security. We're not building a security tool. We have been sort of changing the branding of Bro from Bro IDS to Bro Network Security Monitor. I don't even know if that's right. That might be wrong. We're not building a security tool. It's just that you have to be able to know what these things are saying and have the ability to look at them in a flexible way to work in security. And so it fits really well, but we're not building a security tool. So moving forward from that, um, everyone kind of knows what, bro is, what it does now. And I, I think it's one of those things, and I talk to people all the time, there's, there's a lot of little things in Bro that people don't realize are there already. But that's OK. It's there. We sort of view it as stuff that's that working, and we're just sort of moving forward. Um, 
and I've talked to a number of people about this stuff. There's sort of the, the near future that's coming. And I'm not even talking about 2.1. 2.1's got uh, incredible features. That, like uh, IPv6 is just there. And we had Ashish complain about IPv6. I don't even see him now, but we, oh, there he is. Complained about our IPv6 support over and over and over and over and said, you can't really say that you support IPv6 if you don't support this feature. You can't really say you support IPv6 if you don't support this feature. So we implemented all these features until he stopped complaining. <laughs> <laughs> and it, but again, that was John Suick basically obsessively going after all this stuff as Ashish complained about it and, and adding these things. And I'm sure we'll find more thing, more places that we're still not covering with IPv6. Um, but I mean, even tunnel decapsulation. But not only tunnel decapsulation, but tunnel decapsulation in a way where you're not just sort of left with these packets that are saying, you had an IPv6 packet, and you say, I didn't have IPv6. We're, we're saying, you had an IPv6 packet. Here's the connection it was carried over. Uh, I, I, that's one of the things, because I come from the incident response world. I've got this big focus on making things forensically sound so that if you're going to log something, make sure when you go back to look at the logs, you can really explain to your, in your head what happened. You can build that mental model and make it correct. So I mean, that's all stuff you know, that's basically done. I mean, 2.1 is essentially done. There's a couple of little things to do still, but it's basically done. Um, so I'm viewing near future as 2.2. Um, we have some things coming up in 2.2, like uh, the, this, this focus on, very, very intense focus on files. Uh, because, and, and a lot of other people have this sort of focus too. I, I don't think they're doing it right. The, even the people that are working on this stuff in many of the other projects, I, I think that they've taken a first step, but they're going to have a hard time taking the second, third, and fourth, and fifth steps. Um, and, I, and I've been working on this for a while, and we actually have it implemented already, but we're going to re-implement it, because I don't like the way it's implemented now. Um, it's going to do some really neat stuff. I have to move along, because I'm limiting myself to 15 minutes. <laughs> But the idea is that you basically are, we're going to move you to the point where you specify the behavior you would like it to have. So you basically say, if you identify a Windows executable, send it to Cuckoo Box. And, and what you're saying is what you're thinking, which is, I don't care what the protocol is. If someone sends it over FTP, IRC DCC transfer, HTTP, whatever, it doesn't matter to me. Just if there's a Windows executable, do this action. And that's sort of what we're moving to. So you can really just specify what you want. The other, the other uh, big thing I think that's going to be there in 2.2 is sort of a, a much more intense focus on intelligence and, and handling it in an intelligent way. I hope that will become more obvious in the future. We're still working on figuring out what that means. But you know, making intelligence more readily consumable and, and more usable from a day-to-day -day perspective. Less near future. <laughs> It's further, further afield, but um, it, uh, I, I guess what I thought of last night, it's becoming less fuzzy every day. It, it's fur, further away, but becoming less fuzzy daily. Um, Robin and I had this call a while ago, and there was someone that pointed out they didn't realize who Robin was. He's the one sitting over there who probably doesn't want me pointing at him, so raise your hands. That's, Robin is the lead developer on Bro, I, I guess, at this point. He's the one that merges stuff into master, so. I, yeah, we'll, we'll go with that. Um, Vern hasn't worked with Git enough, so <laughs> maybe someday. Um, so it, it really, we had this call one day, and we kind of realized that Bro needed this focus on not only event analysis, but stream analysis. And it really, it came from another project that Robin's working on that I really don't want to go into detail on, because he hates when I do, because it's prototype still. It's not even prototype. It's conceptual. <laughs> it's research, that's right. Um, so anyway, but sort of splitting bro and saying, event analysis isn't everything. A file is a stream. Protocol, uh, a TCP connection is two streams, you know, one for with this direction, one for that direction. Bro's event language doesn't work really well for that stuff. It's all built around this thing of event, 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 not stream that goes on for an hour. So if we, there are all these sort of things that become possible if we add this extra notion of two languages, one for streams, one for, for events. But then if the event one can sort of 
hook streams to analyzers for those streams, which those then generate events, you end up with this thing where there's lots of odd stuff that becomes possible that you didn't initially realize was even a possibility. And I, I, I honestly think that um, in the less near future, I'm sure we'll have lots and lots of other capabilities. So it's not like we're just going to drop everything else and do that. There, we're, I'm, I'm hoping to make it, over time, easier to run large clusters. Make it easier to run deep, cluster, deep bro, like, like Ashish was talking about. That's something that's been on the roadmap for a while. Um, Making it easier to do all this stuff, making it so this stuff, this things just work out of the box, integrating with external projects better. Um, but you know, ultimately, it's one of those things where 10 years down the road, I think that this split of Bro into two languages, you may never even need to care personally about the stream one, and you could just work with events. But what it does is it lowers the barrier where someone like me when you say, write a, write a protocol analyzer in C, I'm going to say, oh my gosh, and it's going to take me three months. We've lowered the bar the, low the barrier was lowered by a guy who was like a postdoc that wrote BINPACK. Uh, intern. Oh, jeez, intern. He wrote BINPACK, which is amazing. It lets you do really cool stuff. It lowered the barrier, increased the development speed. What Robin's working on now, if it works out, if. <laughs> um, it's, it's again going to lower the barrier and make it possible for more people to do this type of work. Because yesterday, the idea almost is like, yesterday I couldn't write something that would be a syslog analyzer, just as a silly example. Today, because of this new language, I can. It, it's a really big change. But I, I, it was sort of profound for me to play with BINPACK, because I would have never written a lot of the stuff I wrote in C. But I'll absolutely write it in BINPACK because it's easy and kind of fun and, and quicker. So part of the, uh, and there's one final thing, and got a few minutes, um, of my 15. I'll just throw one here, I'll just stare at everybody for a minute. <laughs> um, one, of, one of the components of the, the grant that we received from NSF was developing a sustainable funding model. And it turns out that begging people for money is hard. And um, they don't like to just give you well, our, our target funding goal that we had talked about was seven and a half million for five years. It turns out it's really hard to get someone to just be like, that's a great idea. I would love to see this thing that everyone gets access to for free. Here's seven and a half million dollars. And what that would have effectively done is, is given us like a 50% increase so we could hire an extra person or two, have five years of development time. Um, what we started talking about recently, though, is actually through ICSI offering sort of consulting services where we would almost start a, a company within ICSI and start offering development services. So certainly, if there is anyone that needs um, deployment, help or uh, scripting help or, or anything like that, I mean, feel free to approach us, because this is a direction we're moving. Almost certainly we're moving in. It's, it's, we're just sort of moving slowly now, because there's, there's no rush, and we don't have people banging down our door. But we hadn't announced it publicly. Um, so I, I wanted to make sure and point that out, because we sort of view the success of, uh, of a company or a commercial side of ICSI, which the director at ICSI has been sort of talking about a little bit, we, we view um, the success of that feeding back into the continuation of Bro as an open source project for a decade, two decades. I, I don't know. I, I don't want to put a cap on, <laughs> on how long the project stays successful and expands. Um, we, we sort of view that as the ultimate success for the grant. You know, I mean, NSF says it would, they fund for three years you know, a few million dollars if the project still exists as an open source project in 10 years and has been worked on at a high rate of development. It, 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 it's, that's the perfect, you know, perfect success for the project. I mean, you couldn't ask for anything better. Um, I don't know if I should mention. I'll go ahead. Um, <laughs> Probably out of time anyway, whatever. 
<laughs> uh, what, what we, what, one thing that we talked about, actually, because we had the realization that it's really, really hard to hire people that know how to tap correctly, know how to, look, know how to install an operating system, know how to tune it. Security Onion has helped dramatically with that, because it just sort of works. But, and it works perfectly. For, for smaller places, you just install it, and it works, and everything's happy. For slightly larger and larger places, though, it, it turns out that, that you can't hire. You can't go out to the market and say, I need to hire someone who knows how to tap, knows how to set something up, knows how to sort of get us from zero to having logs, and having that maybe integrated into our existing Splunk installation or our existing whatever. You can't hire that. So that was sort of one of the things that I thought people might want initially is, is like this zero to logs type of thing. And we've been pulling people into place that would be able to sort of satisfy that, that need if it, if it does exist. And maybe it doesn't. but. Um, so I think that's really it. But long term, you know, the the real goal is just to sort of keep doing bro and, and do it by any means necessary and not fail. Because ultimately, if we fail in any way and the project sort of dies on the vine, it's I feel like it's a massive loss to to not this community, but the, the larger community of people that don't know about bro yet and the people that haven't where we haven't added the features yet that makes it so they can't not run Bro, where they have to run Bro because nothing else does certain things that they need. Um, you know, we're sort of failing them preemptively if, if we fail and die on the vine. So ultimately, the goal is to keep doing Bro. So I, I'm going to go ahead and stop because I ran over my 15 minutes. I told no one I would run over my 15 minutes. <laughs>